you know why I'm back. We are here for episode three of, Amb uh, of Ambition. Excuse me. Uh, what is this episode titled? Welcome to Birmingham. Alrighty, so as soon as we start the episode, Mayor Lancaster is walking down the hallway with one of his bodyguards last assistance and he's like why didn't anybody tell me and so the bodyguard says they're pretending to have just found out themselves and so he uh the bodyguard takes out his phone and uh excuse me um gives it to the mayor and it's he reads out loud uh meeting with his mistress so he immediately like pulls out this little drawer with i guess a secret phone and uh starts calling someone and then we see bella sitting in a chair like outside of an office so we think it's her like oh the mistress she finna get ready to tell it all like you know but come to find out it's not bella it is the what is her name miss manning the white lady from the last episode that gave him the papers and he looked her up and down and can we talk about that? Because that last episode, I was just looking... Because it's like, first of all, we started at the heels where it looked like she was wobbling. And then it's like, we're just up on her butt until she walks in the office. And it's like, can we focus on something else besides this booty? And why is this shot like this for so long? Because it just seemed like a long time that we were following her and her booty into that office. And her name is... I said, Miss Manning. That's all we know. I don't know the first name. And so... Uh, Miss Manning is talking to Amora and uh, at first it seemed like she was trying to get her to admit to being his mistress so she gave a little speech and got up and, like she was about to walk out and Amora said pump your brakes if I was you I would sit right on back down because you are being accused of kickback contract skimming and misappropriation of funds misappropriation of funds of government contracts so it's just like uh so while you're trying to protect somebody i would get to talking and so she's like real nervous but she got up and walked out and then in between that time we still see the mayor on the phone trying to call someone and we find out it's bella because she's sitting somewhere with her briefcase but her phone is like poking out and we see el for obviously uh evan lancaster and so he cannot get a hold of her and so um we find out he has a meeting so he opens the door no 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 it's like he opens the door and see her sitting outside his office so he's just like Whew, thank you jesus okay you're not over there you here but what you doing here because you know it's just like a uh, girl why are you showing up at my place of business and so uh she goes in his office and she has a proposal for uh her bella her fashion line that i really didn't get the name of because honestly it's just like this storyline to me is so tired it's just like he got basically too many women that he can't keep up with why do i feel like i'm stumbling over my words uh women that he can't keep up with and um she wants a office or like a what is it called i don't know what i'm trying to say but she wants the space that's in the airport because and it's a smart way of thinking it's just like you know people coming in and out of the airport they're gonna see that they're gonna want to shop in there while they're waiting and you know a lot of people she's gonna get a lot of traction to her store if she can get that space and um he's just like I can't, girl I ain't got time for this and he was like I got real uh meetings that I need to get to instead of talking to you about this and you shouldn't even be here and she's like uh they're not gonna think anything about it they're just gonna think about uh it being a meeting like a business proposal meeting and then he's just like I I have to see and so we see her like push up on him and grab him and she's like this could either be really enjoyable or really painful and he's just like, I'll see. Like, bye, please. Um, and so, ooh, ooh, this hair, this hair, this hair, this hair. I'm sorry. Ooh, cha, chile, baby. Mm. Let's see, speaking. Oh, this is such a sidebar, and I'm so sorry. But let's talk about this Chris Brown situation. 
people really blew, blew that out of proportion. Now, in no way am I telling uh, women, specifically dark-skinned women, that they can't be offended by anything. Because that is not what I'm saying. But the simple fact is that situation within itself got blown completely out of proportion. And my mindset with it is a lot of y'all skipped over the black bitches. You're fine with being called black bitches, but it's something about this good hair texture and good hair, nice hair. Y'all just went straight to that. And, you know, if that, I'm not telling you how to feel about nothing. I'm just saying the way that it blew up was just crazy. Because if anything, be offended by being called a black bitch. But good hair, let that go. And as some, because I know somebody going to look at my hair and it ain't the best hair. But they going to be like, look at your hair. You really can't say nothing. And actually I can't. Because I am one of those people with the opinion of good hair is not a thing. And if you really feel that way, because a lot of y'all were getting offended by that. Like, well, what is good hair? Dude? You know exactly what he was trying to say. But if you don't subscribe to that notion and you don't believe in that, why did it get you so upset? So you're upset because in some way you still have that mindset of oh i don't have good hair which is not a thing hair is hair let that go um whew, sorry i just had to get that out because my hair was getting on my nerves and oh excuse me for a second gotta take a little sip sip um yeah so anyway that just really got on my but to <laughs> tokyo vanity I see you, sis, and you did that. Get him together, cause all the shenan. Cause in no way am I kept caping for Chris Brown. Let me make that clear as well. Cause Tokyo Vanity, Tokyo Vanity set him straight. I am so sorry. I'm struggling through this video. She set him straight, and with his cute little antics that he tried to do on Instagram and his story, like, "Can I take you out?" And she smoked him. Got him right on together. Um, anyway, let's get back to, uh, ambitions. Uh, so Greg Peters, slime ball, goes to see, uh, Papa Carlisle, but he's not there, and, uh, Stephanie sees him instead and tries to figure out what the problem is. So once again, we're back on this restaurant. She won't sell the restaurant. I want the restaurant. I want that whole block, and she's blocking me. And so she's like don't worry about it i got connections that he doesn't have so i'll get you together and he's like "Ooh, seems like i've been messing with the wrong carlisle and she eating that right on up because she can't wait to kick her daddy out and uh take over his business and that's a shame um oh yeah i need to make a correction i believe the last few not last few because i think they got um introduced the last episode um I've been calling that girl Angel, and her name is uh, Lori. <laughs> and I don't know how I'm... But see, I wasn't really listening when he introduced his family, and I didn't care to go back either. But yeah, uh, Purifoy's daughter name is Lori. Lori Purifoy. Um, Because we see her talking to Titus, because uh, evidently she, she put out some ads to try to make them seem sincere with their business. And he's like pull those it's not you're not making the company look good you're actually making them look worse um with your campaign so we're gonna go ahead and pull those and she tried to go talk to her daddy like uh put him like get your little nigger and put him in line basically is to me is what it seemed like she was trying to say it was like pump your brakes i know what i'm doing you and another daughter who thinking like this company about to be mine i'm about to run this so you just need to sit on back and uh let me take over and he's like once again just like papa uh carlisle girl you're not ready to run this business you don't know what you're doing learn from the master sit back and wait before you try to uh come take over some stuff um so and then we have stephanie at uh thelma's place meeting with uh senior evan which she calls him senior i think everybody does and we come to find out that senior is the sole owner of Thelma's place not Rondale like we think because she's always in the front saying that they're not selling nobody's taking her restaurant whatever whatever so the dad is usually nowhere around so we think he ain't got nothing to do with it but come to find out that he does like it's his business and she should have been talking to him and she's not so he's real upset about that like oh this some this a nice amount of money and she ain't said nothing to me and why she ain't said nothing to me um
Oh, yeah. And so, that's the thing. Rondell's point, she has a point. Like, this is our bit. Like, we live in this neighborhood. This is our business. You're not just going to come and buy us out and force us to move out. But then it's just like, like Senior said, this is my business. You haven't said anything to me about it. And I didn't know that they were offering this type of money. And you just push me in the back, treat me like an old man who don't know nothing about nothing because I may not do what you want which is sell the company and then we have to give up the business and then find somewhere else to stay because I remember her saying they stay upstairs above the restaurant so it's just like she doesn't want to leave her neighborhood that's her neighborhood those are her folks you know like you know the neighborhood is your family and she's you're not pushing us out just bottom line um so yeah so then we see Titus meeting up I guess with the only other black person at the company at a nice place i love the music that was playing in the background I, I would love to go to a place like that what uh and then we see stephanie and stephanie's like uh, you would find the only uh what is it like hole in the wall or wa watering hole is what she called it like so just a little quiet run-in place that only a select few people know about um and then they just get the reminiscing about college because she goes to order her drink which is a Manhattan and he turns and like whispers the same thing so it's just like after all these years you still remembered her drink order like I um and it's just even that I think it was the last episode I was at the first episode like she uh imagined herself having sex with him while she was taking her bubble bath and then in this scene right here he imagined himself like cause she got her head on the thing and she turned this way and like he imagined himself touching her hair and she turns towards him giving him a cute little look it's just like <sighs> that's gonna be a problem because y'all imagine each other too much or have imagery of each other in a sexual way and what could have been and if y'all still want to see if y'all still got it from all those years ago and it's just like both of y'all are married to Titus you married for real supposed to be in love with Amora and uh Stephanie you made your bed and you got a lie in it sis so whether you uh really love that man or not not our problem but you married to him and that's the I do that's the hard part because it's just like marriage from the very beginning was business proposals you bringing two families together for wealth and trying to build something together but then it's just like the new day and age of marriage being about love and holding up those vows that you are supposed to value and people just don't they just get married some people get married because of circumstance and because of business and it's just like what does business do for you at the end of the day pertaining to marriage it's just it's like you creeping around with people you can't be seen in public because you have to appear to be a unit with this one person and it's just like i just if i ever get married i you know what but i ain't so let me not even go down there uh so then we see uh mayor lancaster showing up to sorry i was reading my notes to make sure i had it right to bella's house and we just like oh, another scene with them like i'm i'm tired of them man we only on like episode three but it's just like because you falling for them same lies like oh he gonna leave his wife and marry me and then it kind of seems like she's trying to snap out of that and just like i'm not waiting on you so either you gonna help me or you ain't and then he's like uh all this that we doing here we got to slow that down because i think i'm being followed and people like they can see me leaving here it's just like uh you breaking up with me and it's just like really you can't be broken up with because you're the side chick so it's just like even though this is a quote-unquote relationship it ain't real there's no value to this really um but then he's just like i don't even know why i came here i'm about to leave uh and then he gets a text like my security say roderick uh is on his way up and then it's just like as he trying to leave out the door before he get there we hear and it's just like you can't go nowhere because he gonna ask why, why the mayor in your apartment and so he go to her bedroom and then she gotta open the door he just like uh bella baby you all right what's going on because you know she look like she's about to cry and so uh 
what she said she was like i just had a bad day or whatever he like come here let me help you feel better so they go to the couch start having sex and he in the bedroom and gotta listen to all that and it's just like oh. um excuse me for a second because this is getting on my nerves uh so yeah so then we go to uh stephanie receiving oh she's having dinner with her daughter with uh carly and uh she's like can you put the phone down and have a conversation with your mama as she and carly is on instagram looking at uh Lori's pictures like all in her pictures um and smiling at the pictures and she's like can you put the phone down talk talk to me so she's like i'm looking at my um rehearsal list or schedule or something like that and she's like uh you know that's all fine and Danny, but you need to be focusing on your more important uh studies to get into a ivy league law school and she's like i told you that i'm not going to law school like i told you that already i don't know why you keep saying that because i ain't going so get that out your head i ain't going um she's like i'm an actress she's like uh what did she say? She was like, "There, um, people aren't worried about uh what Viola Davis's uh GPA. I was gonna say GPS, <laughs> and she's like, "Girl, you are no Viola Davis." And it's just like, <sighs> Stephanie, just take her heart out and stomp on that motherfucker. And why don't you? Because you are so rude to your own daughter. And it's just like she pick up her phone and go to walk away. Cause it's just like, what? Why do I even try with you? Mama or not, why do I even try with you? You just, whatever. And so then she just, she thought about it. She's like, oh, I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. You said I suck, basically. So I might as well do what you want because I'm not good at this or you just don't want me to focus on that. So you're going to tell me that I'm terrible. So I leave it alone and do what you say. Um, and then it's like, after she leaves, then Stephanie's phone rings and, uh, I think what's his name nick her little assistant she's like yeah i could use some good news let, let tell me what you know about damien uh colin it's just like here go that name again and it's obvious she's trying to bring him back to stir up problems with omora and titus so he can come to her it's like girl we see your play you not slick um oh so yeah and then we have uh like after Roderick and Bella get done, he's like, "You sure I can't stay tonight?" She's like, "Tonight just not one of them nights." So he leaves, and then it's like uh, the bedroom door open. He's like, "The fuck was that?" Like, what? What? She's like, "You just broke up with me." So what I do in my house just because you happen to be here and couldn't leave? Not my problem. Uh, so he's just like, "I don't even know why I did this with you." And he walk out, and it's just like he wipe his face. It's like that man was hurt. His heart was broken. Do you hear me? It's just like he had to watch his uh his woman have sex with, or listen to his woman have sex with somebody else and just well no, he peeked out the door too. So it's just like you you saw some of that and it's just like you had to see your woman get her butt blown out because that ain't really your woman. So what you want us to do? We can't do nothing about it. Uh so then we see uh Carly show up at Lori's place and it's like she goes to knock on the door but then she pull her back and try to leave and Lori like oh where you going boo and she's like I just came to tell you I might like women but you're not my type and it's like girl if that was the case you wouldn't have never showed up you would have let her think whatever she wanted to think and just continue to go on about your business um Ooh, I can't wait to turn my air on. I am so hot. And I'm so sorry that y'all hear the clinking of my braces as I wave this fan. But it just is what it is. Ooh, that light, though. It's good light. But you probably can't see my face for half the video. But I am not doing this over. Um. So, yeah, then he walks out. Oh, because I forgot. Did, or did I say that Roderick sees the mayor uh, as he leaving? Because he didn't, uh, like, we thought he left after that but no he was hiding in the shadows because he's just like oh so the mayor coming out of your apartment so y'all got something going on huh all right so yeah then after car sorry jumping back to carly and lori so lori like pull her into the apartment they start kissing whoop -de -whoop, whatever because first of all lori is not to me she's not attractive and then her attitude towards titus so it's just like girl it's a no for me all the way around but you know they start making out i'm all here for girl on girl action um and then like uh lori pretends to take out her phone 
and say, uh, hi, Mayor Land, class, like pretending that it's her dad and like, oh, she can't come to the phone. She's having an intimate moment with me. And Carly is losing her shit. She's like, give me the phone. Stop. And she's like, oh my God, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never hurt you like that. And that should have been a red flag right there. Cause it's like, huh, girl, no, first of all, y'all are quote unquote enemies. So it is Romeo and Juliet that's trying to happen. Cut it out. And it's just like, of course you would hurt me for your family to come out on top and look good in this lawsuit that we have against each other like girl nobody's stupid well carly might be stupid because i bet you that's what's gonna happen and then uh we end the episode oh no um because stephanie and carly like had like they passed each other in the hallway again as um carly's coming home and stephanie's coming down the stairs to leave and it's just that um uh, what do they call that a smoky eye that smoky eye did not look good on robin evans like even for this scene because it's just like you got this these raccoon eyes basically and then this red lipstick then this push-up <laughs> that whole outfit for that scene like that dominatrix uh madam like, it just didn't look good and it kind of it messed up the scene because it's just like how are you having this conversation with your daughter looking like this <laughs> um anyway but yeah so we uh and she asked her like where are you going this late at night looking like this and she's like oh um a quick business trip i'll be back in the morning even as your daughter i'm automatically thinking you want to fuck something do something because it's just like the way you looking that ain't business attire like <sighs> anyway so like i said we end this episode with uh stephanie sitting at a bar and then we hear a man say stephanie lancaster welcome to Birmingham and she turned around and that man is now you want to talk about fine that man is gorgeous like Titus I thought he was a good looking man but no 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 Damian Collins who have my babies please that man is fine uh, <laughs> my bad but that man is gorgeous um yeah so he told us welcome to Birmingham she's like Damian Collins so nice to meet you and from what it looks like, because they say in upcoming episodes, but probably even on the next episode, she offers him a job to come to uh to Atlanta and work at their law firm. And it's just like, who child Steph, you messy queen, you girl. Mm. But it's finally, I hope that spices this up because I was, <sighs> the second and the third episode is kind of slowing down a little bit and it's. I need to pick it back up a little bit. I need a little bit more drama. Oh, and I forgot to mention, like, throughout the episode, uh, um, Amora and Titus's daughter comes back in town. And she's like a rocker. Her, uh, she has a multicolored, um, they're not Bantu knots, but they're like little, um, buns in her hair, like different color. It was cute. I like, I like the look for her. Cause you don't always want everybody to look the same, act the same. So I like the daughter style. And, uh, they were just, because they sent her away to a private school. So they expect her to be a preppy. Do I want to say preppy white girl? Basically in a black girl's body. Just like very poor. Let me say that. Because white people. White ain't right. So let me not do that. Um, Proper etiquette if you will. That's what they wanted her to be. So um, yeah. She show up with her rocker outfit on. And they're just like. Who is this? And she's coming home just for a concert. Like she left school to go to a concert. And then her boyfriend or just her friend. I'm going to say boyfriend. Um, Shows up to take her to the concert. And she leaves. And then they're playing Twister. She shows back up. Um, And they're like, what happened to the concert? The front row tickets that her boyfriend had were uh, Razor. His name was Razor. And he had like a mohawk looking like this fan <laughs> you know with the blue in it um yeah they turned out to be fake and she was like he was so depressed about it that i just told him to drop me off and uh pick me up tomorrow in the morning and i guess they're gonna head back to school and it was just a cute little family moment but yeah anyway i'm out it's hot peace <laughs>